This is Amy Chan from Cake Decorating School, and if you like cake decorating, you're in the right place. Welcome to our flower series. In this video, we're going to be showing you how to pipe buttercream orchids. We're making a beautiful Phalaenopsis style orchid, and we're going to break it down into steps. So you can just watch the parts you want, rewind, skip ahead, and rewatch as desired. So let's start making the colors for our orchids. We're gonna make three of them. I'm gonna start with a little bit of buttercream in a bowl. This is my American style buttercream. And we've just got a couple of ounces here. And the first color we're gonna make is gonna be kind of a peachy orange shade. And we're gonna use the following liquid gel colors. Sunset orange, neon bright pink, sky blue, and finally some lemon yellow. For my peach color, I've got just a little bit of orange and a little bit of that bright pink out on the lid, and I'm gonna grab some toothpicks and just do some nice little specks of that orange. And just probably like two of the pink. So I went with like five, six orange and only two pink. So I want it to definitely be an orange color, but I want it just to have a little bit of hint of that kind of dreamy peachy shade. So giving it just a little bit of pink. We don't have that, some red. Just tiny amounts will do that. Just shift the balance a little bit towards peach. And I like where it's going. I'm just gonna bump it up a little bit. just to make sure it reads well with our other colors. I think that's beautiful. So our next color is gonna be kind of a citrusy yellow. So we just wanna give it a hint of that blue, but mostly yellow. So I'm gonna start out with three nice specks in my lemon and just the very teeny tiniest speck of sky. So just kind of barely touch that buttercream. I just want to introduce just a hint of that blue and kind of make like an acid yellow shade. And it doesn't take very much of that blue to accomplish your mission. And I ended up just a touch more green than I wanted. So if that happens, I'll just add a little bit more yellow just to bring it back a tiny bit. And that's going to be lovely. That's going to be some nice contrast to the pink that we're going to make and it's really going to stand out against that peach shade. So for our final color, we just have about two ounces in there and we're going to make some pink. And I'm just going to use my neon bright pink if you want to make more of a magenta shade, you can add some red red. But I'm just going to use just some straight bright pink today just to make a nice vibrant pink color. And I went with just three drops. So like a nice intense shade to go with the rest of our colors. But it's going to have a little bit more intensity to it. So we're using drops instead of specks and we're going to get a really nice bright shade. And I think that's almost there. Just one more will do it. I just want a vibrant kind of electric pink color. And this is going to be for those petals in the middle, so we really want it to draw focus from the rest of the flower. And that is beautiful. So we're going to use three bags of buttercream for this little flower and a couple of different tips, so I wanted to show them to you. I've got my peach color striped in my bag with just a little bit of that electric yellow up at the top, lined up with the top point of my 104 tip. So a nice 104 tip, you see the point there lines up with that ribbon of that yellow at the top, and I wanna make that nice kind of vibrant electric yellow on the outside edge of my petals. I've got the rest of that color in a bag with a number five tip. So just a plain round large tip. If you don't have a five, you could use a seven or a four, just something nice and big. And finally, I have that vibrant bright pink that I made loaded up in a bag and I have this one fitted 
with a 101. And we're also going to use a number 61. So that one's a curved petal tip. And finally, a number one. So this one we're gonna use just to do really, really super tiny dots. So you wanna use a small, plain, round tip. And that covers the bags that we're gonna use for this flower. So let's talk about the different techniques that we're gonna to use to create our orchids. And we're gonna use our 104 to create kind of two different shapes of petals. So we'll talk about those first. So that's our bag with our striped buttercream, our nice big, ooh, there it is, 104 tip on it. And the first one is gonna be a bit like a traditional shaped petal and that we're gonna pull out, rotate and pull back, but we wanna pull really long. So think about it like instead of just the normal pull out and back for a really tiny petal, we're gonna go long with it. So really far out, then rotate, and then come back. And you can see that gives us this elongated oval shape. And those are gonna be the three petals that are on the bottom or underneath. And then in between and on top of them, we're gonna do what I call kind of like diamond shaped petals. So you wanna imagine a little bit like you're trying to draw a diamond with the tip. And the first side is actually the angle of the opening. So we're going to pipe, pull back, rotate, pull out, and then pull back. And I'm not gonna worry about the fact that there's a void in the center because we're actually gonna pipe a little bit underneath. So don't worry if it's not perfectly closed. And especially here, it's actually a little bit bigger than I would do. And um, it's just because I'm on the tray. So that void ended up being a little bit bigger than normal, but we really wanna pull a nice kind of diamond shaped petal. Uh, if you wanna get them really accurate, you can even go for a little bit of a curve on the outside edge. And that's just those fatter petals that are on top. We're also going to do a pillar, and this one is gonna be with our number five. And the part of this flower has a name that I can't really pronounce, but it looks almost like a little proboscis or a little kind of nose there at the top of some of the uh, other petals that are kind of in the center area. And we just wanna start with a dot. So number five tip, up off the surface, squeeze, let it connect, form a dot, and then instead of ending it, pull up before you end. And you can actually make nice little pillar. So you can see just like a little nub there and that's gonna go in the center of our flower. Next, got my 101 tip. And these are what I call upright petals um, for lack of a better name. But we're gonna take that 101 tip, make contact with the surface with that fat end and just slide along the surface a little bit essentially to make an upright wedge shape. So we're not really drawing a petal shape with the tip, we're literally just letting it kind of do its thing and you just wanna move slow enough so that the base is fat enough that it stands up on end. So you can see that, there we go. So those are just gonna be those kind of little petals in the middle that kind of flank that center. I'm gonna switch over and we're also going to do a little cupped petal with our 61 tip. So just change because this is also gonna be in my magenta. And this one, just go with the classic teardrop shape. Fat end of that tip is gonna to be towards the center. The skinny curved end is gonna to be towards the outside. And because it's curved, we we'll get kind of like a nice cup to that petal. So you can see it kind of stands up on the end. and that's gonna be part of the bottom. We're also going to use our number one tip to do both spikes, which we're actually gonna combo with that cupped petal to give it that kind of little flared look. So just really quickly for your spikes, dot, let it connect, pull away while still squeezing. So rather than the pillar that we finished and then pulled away, the spike if you pull away while you're still squeezing, it gives you that nice tapered point on the end. And then finally, just some nice little dots. So just light pressure, finish them off neatly. We're making just tiny dots with our number one tip.
so you can see that spike and just some really tiny dots. And we're gonna combo all these together to make a nice little orchid, and it's gonna be kind of like a little Phalaenopsis style orchid. So now that we've talked about the individual techniques, let's talk a bit more about how we combo them together to make the actual flower on our flower nail. So let's talk about how we combo the techniques we just talked about to build your blossom. The first thing we're gonna do is pipe a trio of those oval shaped petals. So think of it almost like orientation, kind of like a peace sign. So two at the bottom, one at the top, and that's gonna leave you two gaps over here at the side. We are going to pipe a little fan shape right there on each side, and that's gonna act as a support for the diamond shaped petals we're gonna put on top, but it's also gonna fill in the little void in the center of the petal and put color underneath it. That way, if you get a little hole in the middle, don't worry about it. There's gonna be something there, the color will fill in, people won't really notice them, right? It'll end up being covered up. So once we have our oval shaped ones and our diamond shaped um, petals on top, we're going to pipe our pillar, if needed, I'll pipe a little support down in the bottom just to kind of connect everything together. And then we can pipe our little uh, cupped shape petal at the bottom with our 61. We can put the fan shapes on the sides and then we can finish up by doing some dots on those diamond shaped petals. And also we're just gonna pull some little spikes kind of right there on the end of that petal we're gonna create with the 61. And that'll create this kind of little characteristic, little um, unusual petal shapes. A lot of times they have these nice little kind of like tendrils hanging off of them and they're really kind of elaborate and unique. And that'll give us a really nice look to our orchids, right? So now that we've talked about this, we're gonna pull out our flower nail and give it a practice. So let's start piping an orchid on our flower nail. I've got my large flower nail out. I have a little piece of parchment. You can see I've divided it into thirds and I've marked it with a Sharpie. So we have a nice kind of peace sign going there in the middle. And that's just to help me judge my distance and placement on my petals. So if you're new to piping on a nail and you're doing things like this and you're having trouble visualizing it when you're piping on the surface, you can always do that, it's great. Use your Sharpie, something dark, flip it over so you don't have to worry about it having contact with your food, and you get a nice prominent line there that shows through that you can follow. So I'm gonna start by piping my oval shaped petals, and I can just start right here at the center and follow my line. So just gonna start, you can see the bags kind of lay flat, the back of the bag is facing away from me, and I'm just gonna draw nice and slow, pull out to the end, and then pull back towards the center. And we have a beautiful petal, right? And then I'm gonna do the same thing for my other two. Gorgeous. Now I'm gonna imagine I'm gonna have this blank space here. That's where all that pink is gonna go with our fun, unusual shaped petals. I've got just a little gap on this one. So I'm just gonna fill it in really quickly. But over here is where I'm gonna pipe those diamond shaped petals. And I want to put in a little fan shaped wedge of buttercream. We're gonna cover it up, but it's gonna act as support for those petals. so that they can sit right on top of that. It's also gonna cover up the center if there's a void. And I'm just gonna readjust my fold a little bit on my bag. to Make sure I've got a nice grip on it. And I'm gonna start here back at the center. We're on the surface of those petals we've already done. And we're going to imagine our diamond shape right there that we're gonna pull. So, out, back one point, over to the other edge, and back. And you can see, even though it left a little bit of a gap, because there's color underneath, it's actually kind of filled in. And once we go in and put dots on that petal, it'll really make that little line disappear if that's where we focus our dots. So I'm gonna go on the other side and do the same thing. So start in the middle, Slide out on a diagonal, again, 
pull it back and right there towards the center. And we're setting up for success with our beautiful orchids. So I'm gonna change up my tips just a little bit. I wanna grab my bag with my number five. And I'm gonna imagine my center is here. I've got my two little upright petals that are gonna go there and my 61 is gonna go down there. So right on top of this, at the base of that top oval petal is where I wanna pipe my little pillar. So just kind of like right above center. Now I'm gonna switch over and work with my 61. So for this, I'm gonna turn it upside down and I'm gonna pipe that teardrop shape right here. So just in between those two bottom oval petals. Nice teardrop shape petal, gorgeous. I'll grab my number one tip. And I'm just gonna make sure that it's coming out nicely. And then I can just slide on the bottom edge of that petal and pull a spike. out from the bottom. And you can see, you get those little delicate looking tendrils that come off the end of the petal. And it looks like it's all one piece. I'm gonna take my bag and just use my dots here in the center to help blur the line between my actual petal and the support underneath. And you can see it kind of disappears, right? Our eye just does that work for us. And orchids often have beautiful colors out on the petals, a lot of dots and other beautiful things. So you can really kind of cover up any of those little gaps, little areas where the frosting doesn't quite join up with those. Final step, change over to my 101. And I'm gonna do those two little upright petals right alongside. So you wanna think about them, they're kind of almost joining that teardrop shape to our nice little pillar up there. So I'm just gonna go along each side of that and make a nice wedge-shaped petal. I wanna make sure I've got my fat in down and just slide right along the surface. And that's gonna give us that nice kind of characteristic look to our orchids. It's very three-dimensional and they're quite stunning. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like more about the cake decorating materials and equipment we use, or just some inspirational videos about cake decorating itself, you can follow us on Insta or YouTube at Cake Decorating School. If you'd like to know more about yearly membership and what it entails, you can go to www.cakedecoratingschool.com for more information. And if you're interested in these products, you can check the links in the description.